Hola, buenos dias. Um, it's fantastic to be here. Um, this is my third time in San Sebastian, and I think it is one of the best cities in Europe, um, possibly in the world. Um, we brought quite a few people with us from England, um, and I think we're going to boost the tourism trade in San Sebastian because they're going to come back lots and lots of times. And all of the tweets we've sent to, back to the UK um, have got lots of people excited about the food, the beach, the weather, um, and about technical education as well. So that's quite exciting. Um, Donna and I spent a bit of time talking about what we'd say this morning. And I'm going to try and take the theme, TVET Excellence for All, and just give you three reflections um, from yesterday. I thought yesterday was a great day. I thought we had some fantastic speakers. We absolutely nailed the whole... We, we nailed it absolutely why TVET is so important for the future, why everything that you do and we do is going to be vital for the success of the future. We also, I think, talked about how much the world of work is changing and how much technology is transforming our lives as well as work. It's going to change everything. And we also, I think, started to get into some of the really knotty, difficult issues around equity, diversity, and inclusion. But I want to pick that up a little bit and take that theme of excellence for all and make it a bit personal. So I hope that's OK with you. Because we had a lot of theory yesterday. We had a lot of, some of the videos were just bewildering. They were just quite scary. Um, and I want to just bring it right back to a personal story, because I think stories are how we can tell people what's happening in the world. So I'm going to tell you a bit about my story. Now, I'm getting older, so my story would be a long, long, long time. I've only got 10 minutes, and I've already wasted a minute and a half. Um, so I'm going to tell you a tiny snippet of my own education learning journey um, and try to draw out of that three really important themes. One about students' expectations, one about lifelong learning, and one about the role of employers, because I think they're really important issues. So the first one, I think, starts simply, really, with um, me at the age of 17, um, which was a long, long time ago. And I was brought up and grew up in a family, working-class family. We were pretty poor, but we weren't destitute. You know, we had a really good life. I'm not complaining about it. Um, I had three elder brothers. They all left school at 16, because that's what people like us did. Um, they went on and did, had really good careers and were happy, so they're, again, not complaining. Um, but I'm kind of, for those of you know me, who know me, I'm, I like to be a bit different, and I'm a little bit competitive, so I thought I'd do something different. So I stayed on in education at 16. Already an unusual move for people in my community um, and people like us. Um, and then one day I was sitting around the dinner table because my mum insisted that we should all eat together at least once or twice a week. You know, it was that kind of family. And my mum um, was a pretty powerful woman, um, instilled a lot of values in us, a lot kind of a work ethic, a belief in ourselves, a confidence about our place in the world. Um, so I'm sitting at dinner um, and I said, oh, my college have got a meeting next week for students who want to apply to go to Cambridge or Oxford University. Um, and I'm thinking of going, because I quite fancy that. Cambridge and Oxford, best universities kind of in the UK and maybe in the world, you know, kind of right up there. Immediately I said it, my three brothers turned around to me and said, oh, don't be so stupid, don't be so silly. People like us don't go to Cambridge. You, you won't fit in, you won't like it, they won't accept you. Don't dream about it, David, just stop. It's kind of, it's stupid. You, it, people like us don't do that. And of course, for me, that was a challenge. That was the sort of thing I liked. So I thought, OK, I'm going to prove them wrong. So I worked really hard, really, really hard, and I got to Cambridge. And I had a fantastic three years. I learned loads, and I think it set me up for life. It was a really good education, as you might expect from a university like that. But you know what? My three brothers were right as well, because I didn't fit in. And people like me weren't welcome, because it was full of rich people. It was full of young people my same age, but people who'd been through a completely different life, who had a sense of entitlement, who believed that they were going to run the world. And in the UK, they kind of do. You know, we, we're full of people who went to the best schools, privately paid schools, and then went on 
to university, the best universities, and then they end up in government. We've got a prime minister who went to Oxford, and look what a mess he's making of everything at the moment. So, <laughs> so they were right, but I had a great time, and I spent a lot of time fighting that privilege and that elitism, and lots of the sexism and misogyny and racism that was in that system. Um, and you know, what I took away from it was my first lesson, which was, We've got to, as a TVET system, think about how we try to give young people a sense of their possibilities. We've got to give them a sense that people like us can do things. You know, we've got to give them more knowledge about what's possible. Because at that time, I, my family didn't know anything other than the kind of what was in the local area. They didn't know what was possible. What I did proved that anything was possible in a way. But actually, that was unusual. What we need is a system, and as a system, is to open up the eyes of young people, open up their ambitions, open up their expectations of their own lives, because if we don't do it, nobody will. And I think lots of young people end up limiting their ambition, limiting what they expect out of life because of where they live, what they, how they grow up, what they know. And our job is to kind of really get them excited and motivated and, and inspired. So that's number one. And my question is, what are you doing in your colleges and institutions to inspire young people to believe, inspire young people to go and find out, giving them the knowledge to be able to um, set their ambitions, because that's really, really important. They might then make their choices. They don't have to go to an elite university. They can go and do whatever they want to do, but let's make sure they've got, they're doing that with knowledge. My second point is about lifelong learning, and I've got to just fi finish a little bit of my story, because I was the first in my family to go to university, and I'm kind of proud of that, but it was just what I did, so it's kind of not that important to me. But what I'm really, really proud of is the second person to go to university from my family was my mum. And she went to university at the same age as I am now, 56, um, after having left school at 15, got married at 19, had four children by the age of 27. She'd worked in low-paid jobs all her life. And then, inspired by my experience, um, and motivated by that, the, in her mid-50s, she said, I'm going to try and go to university. And again, my three brothers were going, no, you can't do that. People like you don't do that. But she did it. She went and did four years. She did a Spanish um, and French degree. Um, she had a year in Spain. It was in Seville, unfortunately, not San Sebastian. But, you know, she had a good time. And, um, and she got so much out of that as a human being. She, it didn't change her working life because she'd worked all her life. But it was lifelong learning in the true sense. So my second question and challenge is, what are we doing as a sector to inspire other people in their 40s and 50s to think about themselves as lifelong learners? How do you do that? How do you go out to people who might be stuck in a low-paid job? They might not have enjoyed education first time around. They might have never been in any training to actually think that TVET is for them and that they have possibilities, they have opportunities. Because if we don't do that, those people in their 40s and 50s now will be left on the scrap heap. They'll be left behind by the technology transformation that's going through. They won't be able to do the jobs of the future. Our job has got to be get to go out and inspire them. And I don't think we do enough on it. And then my final third point is about employers, because I don't think we've given enough time to that so far in this Congress. I think employers have a vital part in the TVET system for all sorts of reasons. But we know that many of them are not inclusive. Many of them don't have diverse workforces. Many of them don't include lots of people. They are very, very exclusive. And they have very narrow ways of thinking about who they recruit and who they promote and what they look like. And they're not welcoming to lots of people. I think that has to change. In the UK, we're kind of lucky in a way because we, we have a very tight labor market. There aren't enough skilled people for the jobs, so employers are having to start thinking differently about who they recruit and how they recruit, how they develop their people, how they try to package their jobs to make them more accessible and attractive to different sorts of people. So I think we're starting to see them thinking differently, and I think that will be good in terms of equality and and, and inclusion and diversity, but we've got a long way to go. But actually, many of them, particularly smaller companies, really need advice and support. And I think TVET and our institutions have a massive role to advise companies and employers on how 
to think about in being more inclusive, how to create a culture which is welcoming, how to package jobs so that people can fit them around childcare uh, responsibilities, for instance. You know. And so, uh, again, my third challenge then, what are you doing as a sector, as an institution, to advise the businesses to be more inclusive? Because if we can get those three things right, if we can open up the eyes to the possibilities for young people, if we can inspire people in their mid-life to think differently about their possibilities for the next 10, 20, 30 years of their working lives, and if we can get employers to be more inclusive, then we really can have TVET excellence for all. Thank you very much.